Hello, students. In preparation for the Literature Appreciation Workshop, we are very privileged to have with us Ms. Bai Luo Tong, one of your seniors who has done quite a bit of research and uh, last year went to represent Singapore in the International Science and Engineering Fair. So throughout her research journey, which I believe uh, started when she was in secondary, secondary three or four, she started to read up on research papers. So she will be sharing with us some of the difficulties she encountered as well as some of the tips that she will uh, give to you in uh, going through the reading of such research papers. I know that many of you will be thinking and wondering, right? Hey, you know, H3 is not really related to the reading of research papers. Uh, why are we doing this for enrichment? Yeah, so the primary purpose we are doing this is really to expose uh, you to uh, the idea behind the concepts that you have learned in H2 and H3. Where did they originate from? How did the scientists go through the scientific thinking process in coming out with some of these ideas? So it's mainly for exposure. Yeah, so instead of uh, hearing from the teachers all the time, it will be very good or refreshing to hear from uh, a senior who will be giving you a very candid sharing on her journey uh, through going through all the jargons and the kind of struggle she has uh, reading through uh, very difficult papers. Yeah, so without further ado, um, I will pass on the time to uh, Ms. Bai Luo Tong. Hi everyone, I'm Luo Tong and I was from the class of 2023. So today I'll be doing a sharing on my experience reading papers um, as a student as well as some tips um, that could help you. So firstly, self-introduction. I was from 22 s 7 d and my research interest has been in material science. So um, I kind of first came across research papers when I was just like searching science topics and I realized that, oh, like science knowledge and like technical findings were encapsulated in this manner. Um, and then the question comes like, after I kind of get an interest in a general topic, how do I pick out papers from there? So the first thing I would do is to search up overviews slash reviews of the topic. And I find these papers to be very helpful because instead of going to the very like um, detailed technicalities, they would go into, they would give you a very like nice bird's eye view of the general topic. So for instance, the progress made, um, challenges faced and um, like applications. Yeah. And so for instance, um, they will talk about like methodologies and then they would like, instead of going to like each methodology very deeply, they would like categorize them and give like general descriptions. Um, and then the nice thing about this is that there are like, because these overviews like cite current work, past work, etc. So um, you will find a lot of citations in the paper. And so uh, if you're interested in like a specific methodology, you can just go see the citation next to it and learn more about it specifically through those papers. And so that's kind of like how I picked up on that. And also like, even if you don't look at the citations, like just understanding the general description of a certain application slash methodology slash something, you can just Google it up and that helps you zoom in onto like the specific area. Yes. So after you get like, you know, the power of papers, what do you do with it? Because these are probably even like more technical and harder to understand than the overview. So, um, so like, of course, we need to read papers more than once, right? Because, yeah. Um, so, especially when you are new to the field, you tend to need to read your first few papers many, many times. So for me personally, on my first read, I would focus on um, the abstract um, introduction and conclusion to get a general sensing of where the paper is going. And um, that will basically, like uh, where the paper is going, what it's trying to achieve and what it has achieved. Again, that kind of like sets you up um, to understand the rest of it, kind of. Yeah, so um, after that, on my second read, I will go deeper into like the middle sections, methodologies, results, discussion, etc. And of course, there are certain sections where, you know, um, there are a ton of technical jargons and you're like, you feel like you're reading a different language altogether. But I mean, that's pretty normal, I guess. Um, and don't get too hung up on it. Like, uh, maybe just skim through once, get a general idea. Then for me, 
I like to like basically break down under like each section, like let's say methodology, there'll be subsections and I'll like highlight the words I don't know within each subsection and then I'll Google them by subsection. So because I mean, these words in each subsection tend to be quite related to each other or like tend to fall under the general category of something. And so if you Google them like together, it will give you like a more holistic idea of what's going on. After I search it up, I will annotate it. And after I finish the entire paper, I will probably write down my main takeaways and like the main things I learned. Yes. Um, then after that, what are the benefits of, you know, reading papers at this age? I think, um, honestly, like practically, of course, like understanding how to read papers at this stage is very important if you want to go into higher education, uh, step in like your higher education, like university or like more uh, because I mean understanding yourself and knowing how like what kind of approach is most suitable for yourself is very important but I think more than that um, two things one is contextualizing what you have learned because um, I think it's just really fun to me to see how the stuff I've learned in the classroom can be applied um, in the real world especially like for instance like in history you learn characterization and you're like what even is the point of that but when you read papers, you realize, oh, wow, that's actually really important. You look at how people interpret all these things in real life. Yes. Um, and secondly, um, I think it's just, okay, this sounds a bit like cliche, but I think there's a lot of joy in like learning about scientific innovation, scientific discovery, because you look at how people go step by step towards something new. And that's something to me that's very exciting. Yeah. And if you find that exciting too, then reading papers should be fun. Yes. Um, okay, then how has history like helped me in general? Um, I think firstly, um, of course, it's the knowledge and the skills. So the knowledge that we learn in history is actually really applicable um, to research and like academia and stuff. And skills, because whether you go into like, a STEM industry or STEM academia, um, the skill of applying what you have learned is very important and history has a great emphasis on that. So that's very helpful. Um, but more importantly, I think history kind of builds a community because um, personally, like I have like built group chats with my history friends. I know it's nerdy, but I do it. And then we just wanted to like kind of help each other. And that's kind of nice. And then also just, I mean, you could always talk to your friends and your tutors about stuff that's beyond history and these are all people who love camp so yay you can like discuss a lot of things with them and I think it's just nice yeah and then um, lastly on like research in general I think honestly the most important thing at this point as like a young researcher slash a high school student um, the most important the two most important things are like number one um, knowing why uh, you want to do research motivation and like knowing your passion is very important because that's what makes research um, an enjoyable process yes beyond that I think don't be intimidated because I mean research wouldn't be fun if you weren't intellectually challenged so even if a topic is something that only graduate students in a field learn it doesn't mean that you can't learn it too so I mean take initiative so that's that so I hope you guys have fun in history and research and reading papers bye bye